Hello, it's Sue Stiles with Maximize Results Business Consulting, and I want to um, welcome you today. I'm going to do an episode for Hindsight's 2020, but I'm going to talk about the hindsight I have personally heard from uh, celebrities, from their the words out of their own mouth on podcasts, on videos, on TV interviews, because I know I have learned a lot from the celebrities whose voices are out there that we tend to hear from. And I thought there were some key points that I would like to share with the viewers, uh, things from celebrities that I heard. And what started this idea off was Cher was doing a tour this year. And uh, so she toured around and I heard her talking to a radio interviewer and somebody had sort of, um, backhanded say, oh, Cher is a grandmother now, you know, she's too old to be touring. And she said, she turned around, she said, yeah, what's your grandma doing? <laughs> and I thought, good for you, Cher. Like, what is your grandma doing? I, I've always liked Cher, and she happens to be the same age as my own mother. So I always know what age she is. And so, you know, she's in her 60s, going on tour, looking fabulous. And of course she's had some work to help that. But you know, when anyone tries to put her down, I just loved that she came back and she owned who she was. And yes, you know, when I was a kid, grandmas used to sit in a rocking chair off their porch, but she is out there doing stuff, getting shit done. So good for you, Cher. I really liked what she had to say. Then not too long ago, I was watching an episode of Ellen, who doesn't love her, she's so funny. She had two um, boys on from Charleston who wanted to be teachers. And she said um, something that I thought was very insightful. These boys had grown up with not, uh, you know, a rich or, you know, that great of an upbringing, not that much support in their lives. And so they felt that they wanted to be teachers to give what they didn't receive when they grew up. And she said, um, Sometimes what you don't have actually teaches you more than something that you do have. You know, people think, oh, I didn't have this, but I would have really loved it. It would have made a difference. And so lots of times, I think in hindsight, we can not look just to the things that we have, but we can look to those things that we felt a lack of and realize we would have liked that in our lives. So good point from Ellen. Then one of my favorite teachers is Tony Robbins. Uh, I have been to his events uh, here in Calgary, Alberta, when he has come. I've actually volunteered and helped at his events. <coughs> Excuse me. And I was listening to some more of his teachings. I don't really need to jump around to get into a state of mind, but I do enjoy his teachings. And, you know, lots of times I know personally I have felt a struggle when, you know, I'm trying to. I feel like reach a finish line or reach a goal and things just don't seem to be coming into place fast enough for me. And he had an interview with Nelson Mandela stuck in prison. I mean, put in there unjustly. Um, and he asked Nelson Mandela, how did he endure the suffering? How did he endure his uh, terrible long stay in prison? And he said that Nelson Mandela's response to him was that he never suffered, he prepared. When I heard that, I personally had such an aha moment. When we have not reached our goals, when we're still on the road, you know, or when we feel like we're coming against those roadblocks, don't suffer, continue preparing. What else can I do today? What else can I? do tomorrow just as if you are on the road to where you want to go i loved what nelson mandela said what a highly evolved spirit of course the next um, celebrity i want to talk about is warren buffett a video that i just randomly caught a little while ago and warren buffett was being interviewed and so shared this right from his own mouth you know i hate it if you just see memes or news reports and you never know from the writing and the pictures if that's what really people said well these are things really that these celebrities have said 
And one of the things that Warren Buffett talked about food was uh, first was his love of food. And he said, you know, everything he learned about uh, what food was good, he learned by the time he was seven years old. He just loves um, hot dogs and ice cream and pop. Uh, <laughs> so a, a true junk food guy. And I guess he got teased a little bit because uh, on his morning routine, he actually likes to pick up McDonald's breakfast on his way to work. He likes that stuff. And that's the way he likes to start his mornings. And he said, you know, even if they proved that eating your broccoli and onions would add another year to your life. He said, by the time, you know, he's 89, 90 and it's almost time to go, he doesn't need to add another year to his life anyways. He would rather <laughs> enjoy the food. <coughs> Excuse me, struggling through a bit of a cold. Then he got into uh, some details. And the first thing he said when he realized looking over his life was that, you know, he said, if you can reach 65, 70 years of age and feel like you have family that loves you and wants you to come over and wants to have you in their lives, that he feels that that is success. You know, there's lots of um, people, millionaire, billionaires who have schools named after them and have lots of accolades, but their family doesn't want anything to do with them. And so for Warren, he said, you know, if you can maintain that love of family and friends, then you have success. And I totally agree. That's the most important thing. Then he went on to give his three uh, pieces, uh, actually four pieces of advice. He got a bonus one in there. And um, for, for the first piece of advice, he said, when it comes to investing, he said, the best thing you can invest in is investing in yourself. If more people, he said, would invest in making themselves better. And primarily, he thought if you would become a better, if we all would become better communicators, you know, lots of times we invest in going to um, school or taking courses on business or tech or some, some specific thing. But he said if people would just learn to communicate better in, read, in writing and speaking, they would increase their value, he said, by at least 50%. So investing in your own ability to communicate. And I guess, you know, we all have such great ideas inside of us or dreams and goals, but the ability to communicate those things and get them out there can be a big stumbling block for people. I know when I help solopreneurs, you're selling your service as yourself. If you can't express that to people who don't know you yet, then you limit the amount of business and the amount of clients you can have. So invest in yourself. You've got to put the money behind yourself. The next thing he said had to do with your physical body. He said, you only get one life to live. And uh, our body is not like a car. You can't trade it in when it starts uh, losing its guts and breaking down. So take care of the body that you have. And uh, I think we could all take that to heart. In fact, self-care, are you doing enough self-care to rejuvenate and re-energize yourself so that you go, can go and give all that you have to your business and your family? The third thing that he said was uh, more to do with his life advice. And he talked about choosing the people that you spend time with, that your choices are very important. And he challenged people to choose to spend time with people who are better than you, people who have gone farther than you, people who are more advanced than you, so that you, just by association, can learn different skills. You know, he said you can't choose your family, your parents, you're stuck with them, but you can choose your business acquaintances, you can choose your spouse, you can choose your friends, and so to choose wisely, and think about that, and I thought that's a very good piece of advice. I'll tell you, when I look back and, uh, and think of some of my hardest days, my darkest days, I wished I had chosen more friends. If I would have had more of a support community, perhaps some of what I went through wouldn't have been so hard um, because I was quite all alone. Um, and the number four thing that he talked about was investing. 
And he said that he felt that the biggest mistake that people make when they're investing is, is very simply that they don't pay enough attention to what they're investing in. They do it flippantly and, um, and they move around too much. You know, he reminded us that you've got to do your research. You've got to feel it inside yourself that this is a good investment. And then you purchase an investment and, and the, the idea is to save it, you know, pretty much forever. It's long term. And so those were his pieces of advice from Warren Buffett. I loved what he had to say. And he did talk about schooling, you know, um, and, and he said, don't put everything, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Just thinking if you go to school and get a degree that is worth anything. It depends on what you want to do. And he acknowledged there's so much that you can learn from books and from other people, from job shadowing and from experience. And so depending, you know, maybe school could be a benefit, but lots of times it's just wasted time. So take that to heart from somebody who has built an empire and has the pleasure and good fortune of being able to look back over his life and give a bit of advice. And my last piece of advice that I took notes on was um, Dr. Phil. When I first moved to Calgary from uh, BC, I saw in the newspaper one day that Dr. Phil was coming to Calgary and I thought, my gosh, if anyone could help give me some advice, I've just got to get in and see Dr. Phil. Well, of course the tickets were over $200 each, you know, 20 years ago when he was at the height of his career. But I didn't let that stop me. I wanted to go and hear from him what advice he had. And so I actually uh, phoned whoever I found to call and I volunteered at the conference center and for Dr. Phil. And when he was speaking, I will always remember he told the story of when he was in football. And he was one of the kids that was in the poor school. He didn't have a lot. And they didn't even have their own football jerseys. Um, they didn't have pennies. Most of the time, they would take a, a big piece of tape, you know, write your number or your name on it, and that was your jersey on your T-shirt that you wore to school. And they had a game against a big championship school. They had the best uniforms. They had beautiful colors. All their jerseys had their names on the back. And everyone thought that the good looking team would win. I mean, why wouldn't they? And they saw Dr. Phil's um, team, just a bunch of <laughs> roughnecks, you know, walking around without even a proper jersey. But those kids wanted to win that game. They had such a drive and a hunger in them that they weren't going to let uh, bad looking jerseys or their outfits, their uniforms. They weren't going to let their costume ruin their performance. And the team from the rich high school, the team that looked good, you know, maybe they had everything. Maybe they didn't really want for much. And so they didn't have as much of a drive. And those kids buckled down. They played harder. They were hungrier and they won this game. And uh, I mean, it was just fantastic to hear Phil tell the story, but I'll always remember the point of that, that no matter if you have the money, if you have the wealth, if you have a nice school, fancy clothes, supportive parents, even if you don't have those things, if you've got the hunger in here, if you've got the drive and you're determined to make a way and win, you can do it. And here I can look at my own life 20 years later and I was hungry. I didn't have much, but I found a way to make it win. And of course, you don't look, you don't know that looking forward to the future. You don't know what's going to happen, but only in hindsight, looking back to have a determination that I could make a way, I could make a living for my family. I could become a loving and giving mother, even when I felt I had nothing to give within myself. I could have healthy children. I could continue the communication and I could build a business for myself and express my gifts, the gifts I want to share, the gifts that I want to share with the world and the things that I have that I think I can do well. 
And so thank you, Dr. Phil, for sharing that story. So in hindsight today, I just wanted to share the words of wisdom from the celebrities that I've listened to. And no, they probably wouldn't do an interview in person with Sue Stiles, but I can tell you what I've heard from their own mouths. And I hope that one of those pieces of wisdom and insight from them will help you in your walk today. So hindsight's 2020. Bye for now. I hope you've enjoyed this session. And uh, for today, I'm going to say bye from Sue Styles, And that's a wrap.